This is the Emergency Medical Minute. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. Good morning. Just want to do a quick medical minute on a diagnosis that we don't see that often. Perichondritis, um, essentially cellulitis of the ear, uh, although kind of primarily involves connective tissue and the cartilage of the ear. Um, shout out to Rick Pescator from Rebel EM. Did a really nice review in July of 2017. It's available on rebelem.com. He's uh, got a good overview there. But essentially, you know, I had a patient come in to the department, uh, two days of gradually worsening right ear redness, swelling, pain, subjective fevers, and some spreading redness in front of the ear. Normal middle ear eval and, and normal ear canal evaluation, but had a pretty impressively erythematous and swollen right ear. And he actually had localized spread both to the submandibular lymph nodes and uh, to the um, to the tragus, the uh, anatomic uh, part of the ear located just anterior to the to the ear itself. That the pinna is the the cartilage of the ear, the body of the ear. Most of the uh, erythema of his ear was within the pinna, but it had spread locally. And I thought this looks like cellulitis, but it's really pretty impressively localized and um, also just fairly rapidly progressing. Uh, And I told him, as I tell all patients with unclear diagnoses or ones that I haven't seen before, yeah, we've seen a lot of this. I'll be right back. Uh, And I spent some time kind of refreshing uh, my knowledge base on on perichondritis. But this is, you know, essentially uh, a skin and soft tissue infection of of the cartilage of the ear. The most common bug is pseudomonas, and it oftentimes is preceded by either uh, a tragus piercing or an ear piercing or some sort of ear trauma with an open wound to the ear. Um, It's not necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily require an open wound, but that is is the most common uh, inciting event. Um, Given the fact that the most common microorganism is pseudomonas, oftentimes these are diagnosed as kind of classic cellulitis and skin and um, the usual flora that cause cellulitis in terms of staph and strep are covered with our usual regimens, you know, Keflex, Bactrim, that sort of thing. But uh, that doesn't cover pseudomonas, obviously, right? And so we neglect to uh, get these folks on oral fluoroquinolones if we think the infection is mild and or IV agents that do work against pseudomonas. The reason why, um, you know, delayed diagnosis can be uh, of consequence is that it can be fairly rapidly progressing and there's poor... um, poor blood flow to the cartilage of the ear um, and can result in kind of permanent deformity, whether that's a cauliflower looking ear or even to the extent of a necrosis or, or just a chronic prolonged infection of the ear that requires um, a long IV antibiotic course. Um, and so early recognition of this is important. Uh, appropriate antibiotic selection to cover for pseudomonas is important. Um, and just a low index of suspicion for uh, inflammation of the pinna itself being uh, uh, per- perichondritis. So a uh, quick overview of something we don't see that often, but uh, uh, think it over. Think of the areas that it can spread to. Obviously, the temporal bone is just proximal to the inner ear. Uh, you can have a, th- This individual actually had spread to the, um, uh, the parotid gland, um, interestingly enough, uh, as well as localized lymph, lymph spread. And so he stayed for uh, 48 to 72 hours on IV antibiotics and ultimately went home on a fluoroquinolone. Uh, so that's a review of perichondritis. Quick, quick medical minute. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.